Hey there everyone, my name is Vince, and if this is your first time to the channel, you might not know that we do tool tours through tool stores where we find you the best deals on all the newest and greatest tools, tool accessories, tool storage, and I, in a recent video, happened to be going through a Lowe's Home Improvement where I found Tough Built at pennies on the dollar. And I've been waiting to buy it, but the people that have been here for a while will know that I love a deal. I love a tool deal. I love savings. And when I saw the price on these boxes, I knew I had to get it. Not just for you, but for me. I'm gonna tell you my initial impressions now that we have this tough built, what is it called? Stack tech in the house right after this message from our sponsor, VCG Construction. You wanna help out the channel? Head on over to the merch store. You can get hats, hoodies, t-shirts. Link will be in the description below. Welcome back, everybody. And, I, you know, listen, I don't wanna to talk too highly about myself, but a lot of people know that when it comes to modular tool storage systems, I am somewhat of an authority. I started my journey into becoming more organized early on in my career. And some of the most organized and efficient carpenters that I had the honor of working with were union carpenters in the Philadelphia metropolitan region. And I saw how efficient and organized and clean and they knew where everything was and how they were so productive doing that. It impressed upon me that I wanted to be like that as well because I came from a background, we didn't have a lot of money. We were fortunate enough to buy the tools to do the job. We sure didn't have the money to spend on organization, so I'd have big metal toolboxes or buckets or tools that would just rattle around in the, in the back of the truck. My journey into modular tool storage started with Bosch's L-Box system. And it was a great for its time. The problem was we're here in North America and they never brought the entire system here. Then next on the scene was the Waltz Tough system, which I really loved. And it was great. It, it was robust. It had a dolly. It was tremendous. I switched over to that system, became even more organized. I was able to throw those boxes around. Didn't matter if it was really cold outside. Those boxes were just tough, hence the name Tough System. But in the meantime, there was another entry into the, the modular tool storage system world with Milwaukee's Packout. And quite frankly, we can talk about all of the systems, but at this point, they are still the leader. They still have such a foothold in that arena. I gotta tell you, people have a lot to do to catch up and they have a solution for almost every situation, for every trade, for everyone. A company that did do a tremendous job in building upon Milwaukee's success with organization and accessories has been Flex's Stack Pack. They have done a great job of building robust boxes with lots of solutions, lots of organization, lots of accessories that allow you to roll in and out of the job with more in single trips. I'll be honest with you, a lot of times we're going up into high rises in center city Philadelphia. You're lucky if you're getting on the service elevator. That elevator might not come back to you for an hour or two. So that means that you need to get as much as you can from the bottom floor to the, wherever you're going, top floor, 15th floor, 30th floor, in as least amount of trips as possible. So that's why for us, modular tools, storage systems make such sense. This one here, Tough Built's Stack Tech, seems to make some sense because, I mean, if all else fails, <laughs> the price was so cheap. How do you not get, try it out? You gotta try it out. Here's the thing, people will always say things in the comments like, it doesn't matter who comes out with modular tool storage. They're late to the game. You know, no one will ever be <laughs> And to that I say, fine sir or fine miss, do you still carry a Blackberry? I mean, if Steve Jobs listened to you, <laughs> where would Apple be? Listen, new things happen. New people rise. The old giants fall. Maybe, you know, this will be the one to take 
out, pack out. Listen, like I said, it was a great price. You have to try it out. All right, I'm gonna focus on, number one, the, the latching system. You can see we have some soft side organization, which I like because it looks like Stack Tech offers multiple solutions to many of my problems. But you can see that's latched on there. Now, all we gotta do to unlatch it, then it easily goes off. And it easily relatches. I like that. Like that. We'll lower our handle. I wanna take these two top, top ones off together. You know we don't do anything like daintily around here. We're gonna start at the bottom box. So we're gonna kinda get these out of the way. But let's start here at the rear because Tough Built already has a solution for a large gripe from a lot of views built into their system, it seems. We have latches. It says pull, handle, release. Whoa, whoa, and it locks up and the handle comes out. I gotta tell you, this feels good. It's metal, it feels robust. Now, if you are working in Center City, Philadelphia, maybe you go into the job in a, in a hatchback Honda Civic because parking's expensive and you need to just jam this in the rear of your car. Now you can get it in your trunk. Or maybe you have a Tiano cover on your truck because, you know, it just keeps the wind resistance from dragging down the vehicle and you get better gas mileage. You don't ever actually put any cargo in, your, in the bed of your truck, you know. I got a tonneau cover. You can slide this underneath and hide your tools. You put your handle, now here's the deal. You can put your handle back in. Once you're out of that vehicle, let's see how easily it goes back in. Simple. You latch them down. Back in. I like that. Let's take a look at the wheels. So we'll, we'll kind of get a good idea of wheel construction if you take a look at inside here at the honeycomb. Because some of the growing pains with some of the other leading modular tool storage systems early on wears its wheels. Now, this looks to be robust. I mean, I don't, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's not loaded up, but. Because inevitably, somebody's gonna be unloading this at some point for you, okay? And they're not gonna be dainty with it. They're gonna be throwing it around. Now, what I do like is that these wheels look to be rubber, non-marring. And the way you can tell if it would be mooring or non-mooring, you could see none of, none, of that is, none of that rubber is coming off on my finger as I run over it. And why is that important to me? Because it needs to be rubberized non-mooring because any mall in the United States of America is going to require any wheels that roll on their tiled surfaces or any of their interior surfaces in that mall have to be rubberized, non-marring, to not damage their floors. We're a commercial retail contractor. That's very important to us. Are these wheels capable of holding StackTech's rating of 250 pounds in this box and not destroy these wheels? A good measure of that would be to get the width, the exact width. Width times height times rubberized will give us the calculation of 200, if it is able to carry those 250 pounds. With, at the point where the tire will make contact to the surface or ground is 2.1965 inches. 
Now, what we could do is, we'll times that by the height of the wheel from its center axis here on the, on the spindle or axles. And we're at 4.479 inches, quite frankly, four and a half inches from the center of the axle. So we have our width and our height. Now, what we're going to do is, we're gonna count the number of spokes, one, two, three, four, five, six spokes from that center spindle or axle out four and a half inches times two and a half inches will give you pretty much, it would seem to be, now your mileage may vary on how rough you are with yours, but we should have a surplus of over 250 pounds worth of, of, of carrying capacity in this box. Me personally, my suggestion um, is you should keep it at 249 pounds. You have one pound of play in there, okay, so that you're, you're not overloading it because you don't want to wear down the tires prematurely and you don't want to overload the box. You never want to go to full capacity if you could help it. It will extend the, you know, listen, do you drive your car at its max speed all the time? I mean, how good would that be on fuel mileage? How, how long do you think your car would last? The engine oil would break down so rapidly. And then you'd say to yourself, wow, it didn't, how come it, it's, it's, it's not out of warranty? Why did it break down so quick? What I'm saying to you is, is that from the calculations, you should be safe at 250 pounds. Let's move on. So, Tough Built claims that it's, it's fast stacking, and we're gonna test that. We're gonna see how easily and quickly it will stack. It's got rigid construction. I like some of this stuff, and they even go over their wheels as well a little bit, but it has steel, a steel reinforced lid, they're saying. So let's lift up this handle, let it down, and you can see here at the edges, front edges here, not on the side though, the front edges, it does indeed have steel reinforcement. It also has a very tight woven honeycomb at the top of the lid. Now, that makes for a very rigid lid, but be mindful that Tough Built Stack Tech is not a step. Matter of fact, it says it right here, no step. Do not step on top of these boxes. And what I do like the idea of is that Stack Tech has this accessory rail here on the sides of the boxes. They're going to allow you to grow your system through adding attachments and accessories to the exterior of your boxes. I think that's a great idea. I'm looking forward to building this out. The boxes are made out of high impact plastics, as well as they have a IP65 rating here on the lid. I'm sure probably all the boxes have that as well. You can't really see it um, because it is black, but this is indeed a rubberized gasket here around the edges that should seal it down. I, immediately, I didn't mean to do it, but it has a, a hold open position here on the lid. It latches in, keeps the box from falling down on you. The other thing that I really like is, because I'm all about Z organization, I like that they have another little tray in here to help organize the box. I could put larger stuff down inside here and then I could put smaller accessories up here in my tray. Now here's the deal with the wheels. They are, they're saying they're nine inches and they're all terrain, but these wheels say more to me because of that rubberized, non-mooring uh, application of rubber here to this. It says that it can get down and dirty in the mud, but it's an indoor cat. Know what I mean? It's it, in this how to, 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 to put its claws out when it needs to. But you could bring it inside and you don't have to worry about it scratching up your furniture. They have a whole list of external dimensions here. What you're all really concerned with though is what it will hold. Will it fit your impact driver? 
sure it will. Will it fit your one-handed reciprocal? No problem. Oscillating multi-tool. Plenty of room. Will it fit my reciprocal in a way that doesn't make the box like unusable? Sure does. Get that. Here's one that everybody has a tough time getting in their box. Will it fit my rear handle cirque saw? What about my worm drive cirque saw? <laughs> He's a big boy. And you know you like playing with the big toys. All right, we got it in there, but it's not all one piece. Will it fit my grinder? Sure will. What about them Milwaukee nailers? No problem at all. Now here's the part where everybody's like, yeah, that won't work. Because traditionally, when you put one or two oddly shaped tools inside the lower box of the competitive brand, usually the interior becomes very unusable for other tools. I mean, for its size, the interior is cavernous and you could put a lot, a lot, a lot of tools in there. Which I like because, like we said earlier, the less trips up and down, back and forth to the truck, will save you time and make you more money. Let's take a look at the other boxes. How easily does it latch? It's pretty doggone easy if you ask me. Let's take this off. This large toolbox has a 100 pound rating. You can see it's very similar in the reinforcement here at the top. It has its gasket all the way around. It has a tray, very similar. Internal dimensions, we have a width of 18.7 inches. We have a depth of 13.6 inches. And we have a height of 10 inches. Just to kind of give you an idea of the dimensions compared to the lower box. Still has the side reinforcements. It has that front latch, which is nice. We have that one button release that stays open. I mean, sometimes you gotta, like on other systems, you gotta reach in and hold, otherwise it won't come, it doesn't come apart. It makes it awkward getting these boxes off sometimes, but not, but not here, not on this one. And then it latches back on. I like that. I like that a lot. We have the upper box. It would be like the briefcase toolbox, I suppose. Has all the same features and functions. Not as much capacity in here up top, but what they do offer is four organizers, cups. They're adjustable. These come out. And then you have two with lids, which is nice. See all that? You getting all that? You get, take it all in everyone. Take it all in. Once again, reinforcement, gasket, front latching. We have the side rails for reinforcement and accessories. One hand unlatch. One hand reattachment. I mean, it's pretty nice. I mean, I'm not trying to overblow this, to be honest with you, but it's pretty cool. All right. This is one, I saw it, I, I had to get it. This thing's quite hefty. It's a chunky boy, if you know what I mean. Now, what are they saying about this? It has internal dimensions. I will assume that that kind of widely varies from the toolbox counterpart of this size because it's insulated. 
It does, once again, have a gasket for IP65 rating. I also like the top handle on this as well because it doesn't need side handles, right? It, it, it carries like a regular cooler. Once again, it has the side rails for attachment. Nice latching for the lid. It's nice and big. You wanna know why? Because maybe I got gloves on when I'm going in my cooler. And then I, you know, I don't wanna take my gloves off to unlatch this and get my banana and then walk inside. I can latch it with gloves on as well. It unlatches and relatches. Really nice like. Now, they're saying that this holds 16 quarts, which would be equivalent to 18 cans. It's saying 30 hours of ice retention. We're gonna, we, we're gonna test that out. If you wanna see it, we'll do a video. Maybe we'll just live stream it for 30 hours. This way you know no shenanigans went on. Let me know down in the comment section below, what do you wanna see? But this is why I love doing this with all of you. Zero cuts. I didn't, I'm not an expert in this system. You and me are learning about this together. You know, I didn't like take the information, read it all, let me look over this uh, so I can be the expert. We're doing this together. I'm a tradesperson just like you. And I'm excited about it. I want to make a video and share my excitement with you about the new system. But I want to move on to one of my favorite parts and that is the soft side organization because I personally am a carpenter by trade and I have lots of hand tools and I feel that soft side organization always serves me best. I gotta be honest, I'm a carpenter, but I'm not like a furniture builder. So I don't wanna have to be making like inserts for inside my tool boxes and pull out this wooden inside. I mean, my hat's off to all of you carpenters that, that, that build that stuff. I personally, I just, I just find that I don't have the time. I just don't, ha I don't have the time to do it, I'd rather have a ready-made solution for me like soft side organization to store all my tools. So this bag, soft side organization, has a nice plastic bottom. Of course, that helps to facilitate the attachment and unattachment from the system. But also, let's just say you were working in the rain. You can put this down on the ground and not worry about the bottom of your bag getting wet and the material wicking that moisture up into the bag, causing you know, hand tools, chisels, things like that to rust, which I like a lot. You have nice big wide organization here on the side for your, you know, if you were gonna put maybe some, some small levels in here, squares, pencils. We have a big wide pocket here at the front, maybe speed square up in here is what I'm thinking. When we open this bad boy up, we have some organization in here and for maybe some, some bits, specialty bits. It's wide open in here, but this would be perfect for a soft side if you wanted to put maybe more power tools or maybe like a whole saw kits, things of that nature can fit in their own case inside the middle box here. I like it. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Tough Belt has like a whole bunch of bags and boxes to suit everything that you need. I'm sure if I go back, I'm gonna find exactly what I need. I just gotta do a little bit more digging. But uh, I'm excited about it. And uh, <laughs> I'm excited that, that I got it on deal because I never like paying full price and you should never pay full price for tools ever again. And that's why you're gonna get subscribed and tap the bell. Because when we find a tool deal, you'll find a tool deal. I appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out with us during this kind of unboxing and, and first look for me. I'm excited, I hope you are excited too. And I hope to see you all on the next one. See you everyone.
Hey, you doing? 